You know, this stuff has been soaking. How many days do you, when were you out at the house? A week. A week ago? Yeah. And um, we really need to let your bark soak for at least a week in the water. And don't keep it in warm temperature because mold will set in. So what we're going to do is, ooh, that's enough right there. We're going to experiment and show you what we can do with this. It takes a long time to ex out of birch bark to extract the uh, tannic acid and dyes out of it. Even if you do it for one day and you see results, don't be tempted to use it because all the particulates are not taken out of the, out of the bark yet. So you really have to let it soak for one week. So I'm going to put some here and some here. When you're working with fish skins and seal gut, um, anything like that, you want to do a cold dye. No heat is involved because what did I say? What will happen to your skin? It turns into mush. Yeah, it'll dissolve. It'll turn into mush and it won't be worth keeping. So we're just going to experiment. So we're going to use moose hide for this uh, commercial tan and then a piece of seal gut. Um, the, we're going to use a seal gut for this dish right here. And the moose hide we're going to dip into this bowl right here. Now, this piece is from the commercial tanned moose hide, and it, there has been no um, rewashing it. This is the one that Don washed to get the, with Don's soap to get the chemicals, to try to get some of the chemicals out of this. And when she washed it, a real orange color came off of it. So this looks like the same color, right? For the moose hide, I want to use a booster. Okay. For this, I'm going to use it just plain. Then I'm going to pull it out, set it aside, and you'll see the color just, it'll be just real pale. And then I'm going to add a booster to this and dip this back in it. So you'll see the change in color happen because of the modifier, which can be called a booster. First, I'm going to dip this in there into this bark. So I'm going to pull this out and it just didn't change the color any, right? There's no color change. So I'm going to dip that right there. Then I'm going to add whoops, this in there. And what's happening to the color? It's getting dark, darker. And you have to be patient with it because it's not going to change color right away. And I think I'm going to add just a tad more, not much. So it's changing color. You could see the difference. Mm -hmm. well, let's put this in here. I'm going to put a booster in this because I know it's not going to. Let's put that in there. 
we're going to put this in here and we're going to leave it for a, a good 15 minutes and then take it out of there to see what's happening. This isn't taking too well. So now we know that gut is not going to take very well at all to this. So I imagine the reason that the, the seal gut for walrus stomach as well probably doesn't uh, take dye as heavily because the pores, it's not a very porous material, it's mostly connective tissue and it's designed to not allow um, transfer of materials in, in the animal system um, because that's what we're supposed to do. Um, as opposed to these which are super porous and have mm -hmm. lots of different fibers available. And then we're going to put the, it's so similar in color. You don't want to put it in there? Okay. Yeah. I think it'll just be the same. Yeah, it'll be the same. You want them just in there? Yeah, in both of them. So Shelly, can you say for the camera what you've brought? Oh, it's, um, it's just merino. It's just uh -huh. applied merino. So. Like, so she brought merino wool. So we'll leave this in here overnight. It's taking, it's going to take color. This is going to be a nice, pretty color. But it's got to be in here for a while. So this was the birch, inner birch bark tannin that we put into these bowls. And then we added uh, baking soda as a modifier. And these sat overnight. And they changed to this deep, plum color right here okay so you have to be patient with the inner birch bark when you're uh, working with dyes with it because it does it changes over time so here's a nice way to roll things here I'm going to show them something here's a nice way to do it with whatever I'm working with this is what I usually do is roll it in in your um, paper towel and then you take it back out. And this is this. Isn't that beautiful? I love that soft, soft rose color. Kind of kind of has some rosiness to it. So you are gonna put your um, caribou hide. And how was that tanned? So this was um, brain tanned, but it, it wasn't smoked. So it's just softened and thinned out. Try. Should I do this one? Yes. Yeah, because that has the most in it, liquid in it, and that's a bigger piece. And then Aaron is going to um, experiment. Move With out of. One? Yeah, Aaron's going to put whatever she needs in it. Wonderful. So we're just going to leave leave them sitting there for a while because it does take time for the dye to soak through the layers, different layers. So I have um, a little piece of brain tanned caribou hide. Um, we didn't get to the smoking part of it, so we left it just that sort of raw, raw hide white color. And then um, this is the first uh, test that we did with birch bark. And so it came out kind of like a rosy quartz color. And uh, now I put some once you put it back in the water, it kind of like reverses some of the tanning um, that you've already done. So you have to put oil back in and then continue to work it back to the soft suede. And so I was just looking at it and it has like a lot of really beautiful little veins. It was the first caribou that um, my auntie had worked on and gave to me. So now I'm just re-softening it back to suede. Now let's take a look at this. Um, Ikaslum amia, this fish skin. We use nimhuak willow bark to dye the fish skin. And this is already commercial tanned um, from Nordic tannery, mm -hmm. the fish skin. It came in its natural color with no dyes in it. Okay. And uh, we, like I say, we use the nimhuak. We took the, um, the willow bark that you gathered and put it in a pot, mm -hmm. the size pot right mm -hmm. here, and filled it up with water. And then we added um, uh, a tablespoon of uh, uh, 
kitchen alum, the powder that you can buy at any spice rack in the grocery store, and, and then a teaspoon of cream of tartar for the booster, and all of that simmered for a good two to three hours. Yeah. You know, uh, sometimes I'll let it simmer for four hours to get all of the, the color and the tannic acid out of the birch, uh, out of the nimhoak, um, the willow bark. So after it cooled, we uh, tried dyeing this, but we needed a booster. So we added a tablespoon of um, baking soda, mm -hmm. and that worked. Yeah. It turned it this really cool color right here, which I absolutely love. I love this 